Hi everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earthglow and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. Today's video is a really special edition of Fragrance Favorites because I am going to be talking about my favorite spa scents of all time. And by spa collection, I mean fragrances that are going to be relaxing. Maybe they're relaxing because they are aromatherapy type fragrances like peppermint, like lavenders. Um, maybe they are kind of more upscale type fragrances, a little bit more Aveda-esque or a little bit more um, sophisticated in some way that points towards, I would say, aromatherapy and a spa-like aesthetic. Now, this was a pretty big category, so I'm actually breaking this up into two videos. This video will be outlining my favorite spa fragrances, the honorable mentions, and my next video will be outlining my top five and the fails. Anyways, if this is something that you're interested in, then consider subscribing. I am always posting candle business related content and fragrance videos. If you all haven't noticed by now, are my absolute favorite to film. I'm a little bit obsessed with fragrances and proud. Um, but anyways, let's get right into today's video and I hope that you enjoy. As I always have to mention at the beginning of these videos, these fragrances are my personal favorites and they are fragrances that are ones that have done well for me as well. And so there's always the chance that you might not like something that is on my favorites list um, and something that I have on my fails list you may actually enjoy. And that is just because fragrance is highly subjective. But with all that said, this fragrance favorite series is intended to just kind of help narrow things down a little bit. There are so many fragrances that are available to us and these are fragrances that I have tested extensively um, and or sell in my own candle line. This video is going to be outlining the honorable mentions for my all time favorite spa fragrances. And with a lot of these honorable mentions, they are are, um, I would say close to half of them are only listed as honorable mentions just because I've had more limited experience working with the fragrances. Maybe I've only made several candles with them. Maybe I've only sold them in my line for six to eight months. In order to rank in my top five, generally a fragrance has to have been in my candle line for what I would consider a long enough time to be able to really see how it sells, how it does for me. And of course, all that is gonna be somewhat subjective based on your audience, based on your clientele, based on the way you're marketing it. But I just like to share what has worked well for me personally and with a lot of these fragrances, the only reason that they're honorable mentions is just because I haven't had them in my candle line for more than I would say six to eight months with a lot of them. Um, and some of them I've offered more as limited editions, so I don't really have a good idea as to how it would perform in your line as a permanent spa collection set. But also with these honorable mentions, I did go ahead and rank them because I just thought that that would be a little bit more fun. Usually I haven't been ranking the honorable mentions, but with this video, I was like, I'm just gonna go ahead and rank these for you all. And let me know if you prefer that with these honorable mentions or if you just like them to be kind of random and not ranked um, because I could theoretically start ranking all of them if you enjoy that. Um, but anyways, we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have a total of nine positions and in our number nine position, um, we have Cucumber, Water, and Melon by Candle Science. Now, this is a scent that I actually had in my Summer Lovin' collection, I wanna say two years ago. And this fragrance did do generally well for me, um, but it, it just is a little bit more perfumey than I might have liked. You definitely get the cucumber water and you definitely get melon with this fragrance. I would say this is the closest thing to Bath & Body Works cucumber and melon if any of you are familiar with that scent. I grew up with that fragrance and it's really nostalgic for me so I was looking for something similar to have in my candle line. And I will say that this fragrance is similar to that but it is just a little bit more perfumey and I did sell this one as 
floating lotus and I thought that that was kind of fitting like if you're just picturing like cucumber water like being in the spa cucumber and melon like floating lotus like lotuses in a pool and I have no idea where I'm going with this analogy but that's the way that I sold this candle and I kind of liked the name that I had for it and it did do generally well it was not one of my top sellers by any means but it definitely um to use Jeff Stanley's analogy would sell a solid six out of ten if you were to take this one to a farmer's market. In my number eight position we have white tea by Candle Science and this fragrance okay so I sold this one I want to say two and a half years ago in my um I actually sold this one in like January and I think I did this as a limited edition. I really didn't know at that time what collection to put this in and it was so strong that it kind of turned me off. Like it was definitely a white tea aesthetic, but to me that this one almost leaned a little bit more, I don't want to say artificial, but a little bit less aromatherapy and a little bit more, um, like you do get some florals with this one. Um, I don't really know how to describe it, um, but this one just to me was a little bit too, in your face um, when I use 10% in 464, but that's kind of a good problem to have, right? Because you can always turn down the fragrance. You can always use less fragrance oil. Um, and this one is an exceptional thrower in 464. And you can also use this one in soaps. If you make cold process soaps, I think this would be a beautiful spa scent. Um, but yeah, my clients who did get this, who did purchase this candle, generally uh, had positive feedback. So it was more me that just was like, oh, you know, this isn't quite what I'm going for. Definitely a spa-like aesthetic, but not quite the white tea that I'm looking for. So I wanna play around more with this particular oil and see if I can get it to work how I would like. But yeah, this one does take my number eight position um, in the honorable mentions for my favorite spa fragrances of all time. And in my number seven position, we have a really intriguing fragrance oil that is only in number seven because I'm fairly new to working with this oil. I've gotten several bottles of it though by now because it's really addictive. Um, this is like if you were to take lemongrass essential oil, for those of you who are familiar with it, and you were to take it up a notch, like you were to make it luxury. Um, and you were to blend it with mandarin and jasmine petals and green tea leaves and lavender. It smells like the most beautiful green tea infused with lemon that I have ever smelled. And this fragrance I would say has a decent hot throw, but I have not tested this extensively. That's largely why this one only gets an honorable mention. I would definitely, definitely consider this one in cold process soaps as well. And um, yeah, this green tea is really, really special and definitely something that I could see selling as like your yoga studio candle um, or as your day at the spa candle. Be a couple of names that come to mind for me with this particular scent. In my number, what are we on now? Number six position, we have a very popular spa scent that is in my spa collection and has been for the last couple of years, um, Lavender Driftwood. I think this scent came out, I wanna say a year and a half, two years ago. Um, but yeah, this one does really well for me. Um, I do sell this as my Serenity at Dusk candle and I do have a picture of like a sunset. Um, I really see this one as like pink and purple infusion at dusk and it is going to be more of this peaceful aesthetic. Some people might describe this one as more of like a cologne type scent. I definitely would say that it's not as much of a cologne as like your mahogany and teakwood or your saffron cedar from Candle Science or your um, uh, Palo Santo type scents. Some of those can lean really, really, really like, um, kind of like that masculine perfume, cologne type of a scent. This one leans that way, but not nearly 
as offensively. You definitely get the lavender, but there is a lot of driftwood to this one. I think you could tone down some of the more cologne-like aesthetics. If you were to mix this one with lavender, um, you could mix it with uh, 1617's Mayfield. You could mix it with Flaming Candles. Um, they have a beautiful lavender. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's Lavender Vanilla, but I'll put the correct name up on the screen if that wasn't it. Yeah, so you could definitely mix it with those scents or you could mix it with Candle Science's Lavender or Candle Science's French Lilac, I think would go really beautifully if you are looking to bring out more of those lavender notes and tone down the driftwood that kind of, uh, if you're familiar with like Midsummer's Night by Yankee Candle, I would say that this one is kind of similar to that, but not nearly as much like Midsummer's Night as the Flaming Candles version of that scent. They have a Midsummer's Night dupe and that for fragrance is not one of my favorites at all. I would consider that offensively like a cologne slash perfume in a way that is kind of off-putting to me. So in my number five position, we have Cassis by Stone Candles. And this is a fragrance that I've been working with only for like the last six to eight, I think for the last six months. I've had this in my line. But I've done this fragrance 50-50 with Lotus by Stone Candles, so it's a one-to-one. -one. And this is my Antalya candle in my Wanderlust collection. Um, this candle is such a beautiful scent. Like I feel like those two fragrances go so well together. But this one is definitely a standalone, 100%. This is the most beautiful cassis I have ever smelled. I was actually introduced to this fragrance by Michael Aponte from um, Candle Romance. And he said that it was the most beautiful cassis he had ever smelled. And I have to agree. Cassis is definitely a fragrance that not a lot of people are familiar with. Um, I believe it is a type of, um, Oh gosh, is it a type of flower or is it a type of, I think it's a type of uh, liqueur, actually. I don't think it's a type of flower, but it does have a lot of floral aesthetics to it. I think it's similar to like a current type of a scent, but it's really a unique fragrance in its own right. So I don't think it would be really fair to compare it to a black currant. I actually blend this fragrance with Figuere by Stone Candles, and I think I featured that fragrance in my top earthy scents um, fragrance favorites video. But yeah, this is my Antalya candle for Antalya Turkey in my Wanderlust collection. And I absolutely love how those two fragrances go together. Um, I was having some issues with the Figuier with getting it to um, burn cleanly. That scent has been kind of problematic for me. But yeah, with the Cassis, it is an absolutely beautiful, like I feel like it enhances the aesthetic of that Mediterranean Sea type of a vibe that I was going for with my Antalya candle. And yeah, this one screams luxury 110%. Um, and you definitely do get some lime in this one as well as the top note. And I do definitely pick up a little bit of patchouli and maybe a hint of leather in the base on this one, but it's a very soft leather. It's nothing masculine or offensive in any way. Um, it's just a really different fragrance than anything I've ever smelled before. And yeah, so this one ranks number five in uh, my honorable mentions and largely just because I've only worked with this one for about six months but my Antalya candles did sell out right away and I actually had one client who I believe was from Turkey who said or no, she wasn't from Turkey, but she had family in Turkey. And she said that this candle, um, she feels like represents her country absolutely perfectly. Uh, so that really made me smile. But anyways, this is Cassis by Stone Candles. In my number four position, we have another fragrance that has been in my spa collection for a really long time. And it's a very popular scent for me. Um, this is Santal and Coconut by Candle Science. And I personally do not really like this fragrance. Um, this is my Namaste candle in my spa collection. And I do keep this one in my spa collection because it's really um, popular with, I would say a pretty good handful of clients will keep repurchasing this one. Why I don't like it, I think that the coconut is a little bit too sweet and overpowering, and I would like more of that woody, sophisticated Santal. Um, if you're looking for a true Santal, I would recommend the one by Stone Candles, the Santal they make. It's a Le Labo 
um, I believe, dupe uh, for Sansal 33. And it's a spot on dupe and it's so fabulous. But I do have trouble with that one uh, to get it to stay lit with my wooden wicks. So that one is kind of problematic for me. But yeah, this one I've had in my spa collection for a very long time and it is my Namaste candle. And yeah, so I have to rank this one pretty high because it is a scent that um, I think that you should be aware of because a lot of people um, would typically like something with coconut or with santal when they're thinking about a spa type of a collection. Those more sophisticated tropical notes are very, very popular. And I think that this is a great kind of standard spa type scent. And in my number three position, we have Oh my God, this fragrance is so lovely. This is the most beautiful lavender I have ever smelled. And this is Mayfield by 1617. So I've smelled a lot of lavender fragrances. I think I've smelled the lavender vanilla from the Flaming Candle, the lavender that uh, Candle Science makes. I've done the one from Candles and Supplies. And I've also done the black, amber, and lavender. I basically, I think I have more than seven different lavenders in my fragrance collection at this time. And of those, this one unquestionably ranks number one. And I think lavender is just a really classic note. When people think of a spa collection, they're wanting uh, more than likely for you to have some sort of a nice lavender in that collection. And this one, the only reason I don't rank it higher is because this is a scent that I am fairly new to working with, but it is such a beautiful lavender. Like if you're looking for a true to life lavender that is like taking the essential oil from France up another level with like Tahitian vanilla and a little bit of Meyer lemon, this is it right here, Mayfield by 1617. And I would say that this is a decent thrower in natural waxes. I will say that I wish it were a little bit stronger in my um, 464 and in my beeswax soy and cocoa cream, but it is not terrible by any means. And some of those softer florals are gonna be a little bit harder to get to pick up. Um, but you could actually probably blend this one with some sort of a lemon or some sort of a citrus note, maybe even bergamot by Nature's Garden, um, a little bit of that, and that will kind of carry those other more subtle middle and base notes up a few notches. In my number two spot, we have not surprisingly, Lotus by Stone Candles. And yeah, this one definitely is a special fragrance. Um, you could use this as your yoga studio candle. You could use this as your day at the spa. You could use this as your floating lotus. You could call this just Lotus Blossom or Lotus. You could call it um, lemongrass and lotus. There are so many beautiful spa-like names that you could give this one. This is a classic fragrance um, for a spa collection, I would say, but it's also very different. Like, it's going to give your candle line a sort of modern infusion in a upscale way, I would say. Um, this fragrance has top notes of basil and lemongrass. It has a middle of that lotus, which is such a beautiful, I wanna say South African, um, it's native to South Africa, I wanna say, uh, flower. And it's just the most lovely, refreshing, you almost get like some light, like I don't wanna say vegetable notes, but you definitely get basil in this fragrance. And I would say that you also get a little bit of coriander. I believe that's one of the base notes in this fragrance. Um, but yeah, I have, as you can see, um, gone through almost the whole 16 ounce bottle, but I would still say that I have fairly limited experience working with this fragrance. Um, I do use it in my Cape Town candle. Um, I blend this one with Calla Lily by Candle Science, but I actually think that this one would be better just by itself um, as a standalone. But yeah, this one is an excellent thrower in natural waxes. I use this one in my beeswax soy and cocoa cream wax blend. And um, yeah, it is a stunning, stunning spa fragrance. And my number one honorable mention for my favorite spa fragrance of all time, we have a fragrance that I get requests for all year long 
even though I have this one actually in my Winter Wonderland collection, um, people will request it. Well, actually I had this one one year in my Pride collection as my um, Breathe Easy candle. I wanna say it was called, did I call it Breathe Easy? Yeah, it was called Breathe Easy. Um, but this is peppermint and eucalyptus. And yeah, people ask for this scent all year round. This is a classic peppermint and eucalyptus. You definitely get, I would say a 50-50 of each. Maybe there's a little bit more peppermint to this one than eucalyptus, but it's a very good blend of the two uh, fragrances. And you can also use this one in cold process soap up to 6%. I believe that this fragrance would work very, very well in an aromatherapy line with cold process soaps or with candles. But yeah, this one is in my Winter Wonderland collection as my Breathe Easy candle. I also sold this under the name Peppermint and Eucalyptus. And I also had this one in my Pride collection one year as I think I called it breathe easy in that collection as well um but yeah this one hands down is my number one honorable mention uh, for my favorite spa fragrance of all time well that is all for this video i hope that you enjoyed and don't forget to give this one a thumbs up if you did like it and stay tuned for my next video which will be featuring my top five spa fragrances of all time along with two fails um, and that one will be coming out i believe four days from now um in my next video upload three or four days from now but anyways thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to comment down below if you know of any spa fragrances that i need to check out um because i am always down for trying new fragrances or if you use any of these scents and really like them in your own candle line but anyways thank you so much for watching and happy candle making